Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to our beloved lecturer Wan Farida. My name is Intan Suzlana Azila binti Jamrat. My group member Muhammad Ali Hanaki, Muhammad Idawudin and also Muhammad Afiq. So today we're going to present our assignment which is to evaluate the process of various type of healthy health by using following industry. According to OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administrative, healthy hazard refers to a chemical that is qualified according to potential that can cause to the following hazardous effect such as skin corrosion and irritation eye irritation, respiratory problem, and toxicity. Hazardous healthy hazard are chemical, physical, and biological factor in our environment that can be negative for short and long term. Exposure can also occur to, through a touch, inhalation, and injection. Five of healthy hazard can occur in iron and steel industry. First is noise. Noise is physical hazard that occur from the use of machinery and movie equipment that be using paint. Second, sleep, treat and fall. And also a physical hazard that because of unsuitable platform, platform that may lead to sleep and injury. Third is falling object. The leading the fall object and uh, hitting the partner nearby person. Four is inhalable agent is chemical hazard that the pulmonary system may be affected by exposure to the harmful agent. Five is ionization radiation is a radiation hazard because of the oil and lubricant rules spillage. The assessment process that being choose is a noise exposure. The long term effect can lead to a permanent thickness thirst and hearing loss because of the loud sound of extended exposure. By referring of code of practice, the noise exposure assessment is the exposure that during should be not extended the limit established by the competent or authorities recognized standard. The assessment should be appropriate to consider the risk of hearing impairment, the degree of interference, uh, communication, essential safety purpose, the risk nervous, and the effect. For step of noise assessment, first, we need to identify the main source. Consider all the different source, source of noise place. Analyze the loudest noise occur. Second is the measure the noise level. Use the dosimeter to measure noise level of your workplace. Personal dosimeter should be placed on the member of allowed to more useful data gather. Third is implementer control measure. Assuming the noise level is too high, need to implement control measure of the noise impact of the main source. Let's record the finding. As after the assessment, the situation and implementation, any change and record the finding. Equipment and apparatus that be used for noise assessment first is sound level meter. Sound level meter is a handle device that enable to measure the sound that the near within 10 cm to 15 cm. Second is dosimeter. Dosimeter are the small device that the measure the personal exposure. And third is sound level calibration. The sound level calibration or is adaptable tone of very accurate level and frequency. The lastly, procedure of evaluation noise assessment. Listen to the main characteristic of the noise to be a measure. Choose the most suitable instrument that make a note and sketch it. Making a sketch of the noise environment. I measure the noise and note 
down all the devil measure of each of the frequency. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. My name is Mama Ali Panati. For my part is palm oil plantation. The type of health hazard for the first is noise and private exposure, which is a physical hazard. The activity is collection of fresh fruit punches (FFB) in hilly area and uneven ground using mechanical buffalo that is not ergonomically designed in terms of engine vibration and noise. Second is pesticide and herbicide with uh, exposure which is a chemical hazard. The activity is pre preparation of chemical and fertilizer, pesticide and moss spraying work and also perform uh, manuring activity in complete use of PPE. The third is infection disease which is a biological hazard worker who were involved in wedding, drain cleaning and also land clearing and the fourth is stress and mental health disorder which is a psychology, uh, psychosocial hazard uh, psychological stress and heat stress, working posture and the force required to cut the FFP low wage, long working hour and also the last is uh, musculoskeletal disorder MST which is ergonomic ergonomic hazard. The activity is harvesters cut uh, FFB, cut fruit stock and palm uh, palm corn. Uh, fertilization activity manually, uh, stopping and squatting uh, during college, uh, collecting lost fruit activity. The assessment process that has been choose is uh, musculoskeletal disorder (MSD) in oil palm production by referring uh, Department of uh, Occupational Safety and Health uh, Malaysia DOSH and guideline on uh, ergonomic risk assessment at workplace. Step of ergonomic risk assessment (ERA) uh, for the first is review any existing data. The first step is to take a workplace history and ensure they understand the baseline. Second, choose your tool. Uh, important to take a step back and determine the, how it will measure this data. Third is gather subjective data, uh, which is a recommend starting with a hand-on uh, subjective evaluation of the current workplace, which is like palm oil plantation. For the fourth, fourth is a uh, gather objective data. Use all the information to develop the per, uh, prioritized list of work activity. And the five is uh, analyze all data and prioritize risk, pull all information and insight together to create a, a prioritized list of the risk factor. For equipment and apparatus, for the first is measurement tape, second audio, video and image capturing tool like smartphone, video camera and so on. And for the third is assessment form and checklist. And for the fourth is personal protective equipment. Uh, PPE and the last is measurement tool that can be assist the ergonomic risk assessment such as blast meter, goniometer, push pull gauge, hand dynamometer and so on. For procedure in ergonomic risk assessment ERA, for the first is review of initial ERA and adequacy of existing control measure, identify the control measure implement and assess if the existing control are adequate. Second is gathering the additional information uh, obtained for the information such as history of MSD, origin of problem, relevant document relating to the work. And also the third is ergonomic risk level assessment. Select the appropriate method for the specific risk factor. For the fourth is workstation Config, uh, configuration assessment should be carried out if in the opinion of the trained person that the ergonomic problem are due to the workstation arrangement. For the fifth is summarize the uh, finding to determine the appropriate control measure. For the last is uh, uh, prioritize for ergonomic improvement using prioritize uh, setting table to determine the priority of control measure implementation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Afi bin Ahmad Muhammad. My metric number is 18113317 We talk about road construction assessment. There are several types of health hazards that focus in road construction activity, such as psychosocial hazard, physical hazard, biological hazard, ergonomic hazard and chemical hazard. Hazard anticipation from psychosocial hazard 
is heat stroke. Heat stroke is a body overheating usually as a result of prolonged exposure to a physical exertion in high temperature. From activities such as survey work, site access preparation, concrete spinder, embankment and sub-base. While from physical hazard, the hazard anticipation is occupational hearing loss. It caused from hearing impairment resulting from exposure to loud sound at work. From activities such as site clearing and embankment. While from biological hazard, it is from leptospira. It is caused by a bacterium called leptospira interrogants. The organism is carried by many animals and live in their kidney. It end up in soil and water. The reconnection activity from this biological hazard come from pet excavation, swamp bug field and culvert. While for ergonomic hazard, the hazard anticipation is from hand arm vibration syndrome HAVS. HAVS is a disorder resulting from prolonged exposure to vibration, specifically to the hands and forearm while using vibrating tools. The reconnection activity is such as manual excavation, disassembling of piling machine, file cutting using pneumatic breaker. The, la the lastly is chemical hazard. The hazard and precipitation is come from exposure to vapors of solvent, paints and lacquers. This is from cause irritation and damage to eyes and mucous membrane to the respiratory and digestive tract and to the skin. It comes from activities such as site clearing, mobilization of construction machineries, and painting. The assessment process that being chosen is heat exposure. The long-term effect of heat exposure can lead to heat stroke, cause from body become unable to control its temperature, the switching mechanism fails, and the body unable to cool down. By referring to the Department of Occupational Safety and Health Malaysia (DOSH). The heat exposure assessment risk is the level heat index and duration of exposure should not exceed the limit established by the competent authority or by other recognized standard. The assessment should, as appropriate, consider first determine whether outdoor workers are at an elevated risk of developing heat stress. Second is provide a basis for taking action and mapping the operational activity at the workplace to minimize the risk of heat stress. There are five steps of heat assessment. First, we must identify the hazard. Second, evaluate heat stress to identify personal who have a high risk of heat stress. Third, monitor and limit heat stress for high risk personnel. Fourth, implement heat stress control strategies. Lastly, record, review and revise your findings. It is important to measure the heat stress load imposed to the workers' body as it may affect the workers' ability to work and could lead to many heat-related illness. There are many common indices being used by industry to assess the level of risk to the workers like wet block load temperature index, heat stress index, and thermal load limit. To get the measurement parameters, there are several types of equipment such as first, dry bulb sensor to measure air temperature by using thermometer freely exposed to the air but shielded from radiation and moisture. Second item is natural well bulb sensor. It's the same like dry bulb sensor but the difference is that the bulb of the thermometer is covered by the wet cloth and or wick. Third equipment is globe temperature sensor. It's to measure air temperature by using a black globe with a thermometer inserted in the center. Lastly, air velocity sensor is to measure air velocity by sensing the pressure produced by the movement of the air. Procedure of evaluation heat assessment. First, conduct environmental monitoring using suitable instrumentation to obtain environmental factor and non-environmental factor data. Second, gather the data. Third, choose the suitable method index. To calculate WDGT, HSI, TWL index using formula, outdoor or indoor condition. First step is analyze the result of WGT, HSI and TWL after addition of environmental factor and non environmental factor data. Lastly, compare them with the standard. Continue to find part is healthcare and hospital personnel. There are five types of health hazard. First is biological hazard. The hazard anticipation is contact infection. The activity is cleaning, disinfection, maintenance work and disposal work in contaminated area. Second is a chemical hazard. 
The hazard anticipation is exposure of the respiratory tract. The activity is cleaning and disinfection agent, treating patient using medical substance. And the third is physical hazard is MSD, which is musculoskeletal disorder. The activity is heavy manual lifting when transferring or representation patients. The fourth is physiological hazard. The hazard anticipation is emotional or mental abuse. The activity is lack of patient to handle. The fifth is physical hazard, which is hazard anticipation is laser radiation absorption. The recognition activity is X-ray and operation room. Next, to my part is step of risk assessment. First, identify hazard and those at risk. For example, understand how the work is done and how harmful it cause. A hazard can be anything. For example, work material, equipment, work method, and or practice that can be harmed. Second is evaluating and preparing this. Third is deciding on prevention action. For example, measure of workplace are designed and a change in the behavior among the workers to have to be derived as a function of the risk. The fourth is taking an action. For example, the area of responsibility must be clarified for action to be taken. The fourth is document documentation and monitoring review. and apparatus. First is time management. Second is worker survey and interview. And the third is work situation analysis. And the fourth is the design of work organization and creation of degrees of freedom. Next, the part, my part is procedure of evaluating the risk assessment. First is create awareness of a hazard and the risk. Second, identify who may be a risk. For example, employees, cleaners, visitors, patients, and so on. The third is determine whether a control program is required for a particular hazard. And the fourth is determine its existing control measure are adequate or if more should be done. The fifth is prevent, ensure, prevent injuries or illness, especially when done at the design of planning stage. The sixth is prioritize hazard and control measure. The last for the procedure of evaluating the risk assessment is meet a legal requirement where applicable. Last but not least that I can conclude is there are many type of hazard at any place. So we must be aware on our environment surrounding to avoid any accident that will be happen. Thank you to Dr. Farida for your time watching our video presentation. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, Dr.